Hey y'all, Eric Scott here, and I'm going to assemble the Rep Fitness uh, dumbbell rack. And I got all my dumbbells behind me out of the freight container. Uh, what I'm going to do next is just, you know, I've taken it out of the box. I've staged all the components. Excellent job packaging. It looks like this assembly should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got these two end pieces here. And then from the sides, we're going to use the number one. Uh, there's a wasp. Uh, Go away. It's gone. Um, we're going to use the number one bolts, which are M10 by 75. So that's these. Okay. So these go to the side. And then the other ones, the ones that go up, are going to be a different one. And then we've got the foot covers. So we're going to start out with the sides. The instructions are pretty simple. There's a one page document. So. Go ahead and take these out here. Set that over there. And let's see. So we're going to prop one of these up. One these side pieces. Before I do, I'm going to go ahead and put the feet on it. I've got a rubber mallet, but I didn't even need it. I just went right on. So got that foot. And then this foot, obviously, make sure the that part with the Little ridgy pattern is down on the facing the ground. Okay, so there's one. This will be one side of the rack. And now we're going to do the other, which will be the other side. This ought to be a pretty straightforward assembly, but again, I like to video everything that I assemble because it may help you. And this video, if this video does help you, please consider sending me a super thanks. And you can find a link down below this video. It's a little icon that says thanks. Completely optional, but again, it helps me, it helps my channel if you choose to super thanks. And also be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Let's see. So that's in there, and now we're going to do this one here. I can't emphasize how high quality this is, man. I mean, it's definitely gym quality stuff, in my opinion. Not the type of rack, of dumbbell rack, you're going to find in your local uh, sporting goods store. A lot much, much better quality for sure. So see, those are going to go like that, and then let me make sure we've still got everything properly aligned here. And we do. So then we're going to take. Actually, it's got tools in here. I think I'm going to. I may try using their tools. Why not? Now I don't want to mix these two up, so I'm going to. Put this on the other side over here. Okay, so this piece, These legs are going to face inside, so the rep logo is on the outside. These legs are going to face on the inside, and we're going to have a bolt. A bolt. And then a washer.
and then another bowl and another washer. And then we're going to have this piece with this shelf type piece on the inside and then this angled type piece facing down. Sorry, just a little confusing here. I'm trying to figure out. Ah. Okay, so this part was a little bit confusing. If you position this with the rep logo on the outside like it is, there's going to be a slant to this piece. Now the slant, it's facing down. So the rep logo is over on this side. The slant faces away from the rep logo. So basically, I've got a bolt in the top far piece and then in the bottom. See, see how that's angled? And now I'm going to put the uh, washer and the bolt on, but I'm only going to uh, finger tighten it. So I want to make sure all this is correct before I before I go too far here. Actually, I guess I'm probably going to have to go ahead and tighten this somewhat. Tell you what, this would be a lot easier with a socket set.
There we go. Yeah, this is a must. You need to use a socket set. You could use those included tools, but I don't think you're going to like it. Now I think once we get this base put on, things will be easy. Okay, so that's on. And again, to demonstrate, there's a slant, but the slant goes the opposite side of the rep logo. So now we're going to do the other side, and then we're going to put our first layer on and see how, how this looks. So basically what I'll do is I will put this here. We'll make sure we're still in the camera's field of view. Yeah. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put this one over here. And again, we'll start it out again with the slant going in the same direction. That's important. Bolt. And a washer. And a bolt and a washer. Okay, and the slant, see it's in the same direction, that's what you want. And then we'll do another washer. And then the nuts. Now my expectation is once we get this tightened and once we get the first rack, we'll then have a base and then we'll just repeat the process. So it should be should be pretty straightforward in the head at that point. Again, a socket set and a wrench, you definitely want to bring that, bring your own. You could use the tools, but I know you'd probably be pretty frustrated. Man, those will wear out your hands too. Okay, that's good and tight. Now, what we're going to do is the first across part, the part that goes across there. So with it, so the one facing away from the rep logo, again, the rep logo is closest to the camera on each side. The one facing away from the rep logo, you're going to have this slanted piece facing out. So this slanted piece over here is facing towards me. See? It's going down. So that's going to go like that. And then this fit there. Now for this, we're using the other set of bolts and washers. 
which are in this separate piece that had the tools in with it. So, and I'm just going to double check, M10 by 20. M10 by 20. Okay. Yep, so we're going to do... Interesting, it's showing, with these it's showing a washer, but I don't, I don't see washers in this pack, unless they put all the washers in the other pack. So let's figure that out. So one, two, let's see, there's four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24. So out of this pack, I'm going to use 24 of those eight of which I've already used. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty-eight. Okay, well, I guess that uh, I guess that means that I use these for. Well, let's do this to be safe before we start on the. Well, no, let's go ahead and start on the cross pieces here. Maybe, maybe they don't need a washer. It seems kind of weird. I just would have expected the washers to have been in the same pack as the, I don't know. I mean, I guess technically what I could do is stage the uh, other pieces, just not tighten them yet, and see what we got as far as washers are concerned. Oh! I just don't want to have to undo anything, you know what I mean? And again, the slant for all of these will be the same. They'll face towards me. That's there, and then washer. We're just going to do it this way. I know it seems kind of silly, but at least this way I've got a visual as to what hardware I have available. I mean, the quality of this thing, man, when you feel this in your hands, it's, it's incredible. And I'm not complaining about the assembly process. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. It's just, I would have liked to have seen with the instructions, which I don't care. I'll take, I'll take the ciphering instructions over, over, a inferior, over an inferior quality product. But 
it would have been easier if they had made if they had added a few step by step steps on there but you know I'm not I'm not trying to be overly critical here I just that I, I don't sugarcoat anything man this is great quality equipment but I did have to think a little bit and I don't like to think on weekends man I don't like to think I just like to perform. I mean, dude, the quality of this is is incredible. I mean, it's like top quality components. And you know it's quality when they don't seem to include extra bolts <laughs> or anything because they know it is good quality. That would have been an opportunity for improvement too if they had included maybe an extra bolt and nut or two. Just in case, I mean, because you know, everybody's assembly location is different. It's not as pristine as mine with this large garage area. You know, you could, people could be assembling in a place where they inadvertently lose a part and then boom, they're in a world of hurt. Okay, so now we're going to do this final one here. You know, since it didn't have order, since it didn't specify the order for assembly, technically, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and tighten all these up, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just to have that out of the way. I mean, getting this out of the... I'll say the most time-consuming part because they did such an excellent job, a thorough job of packaging it. One of the most time-consuming parts was unboxing it and and uh, you know get, getting it uh, all, all the shrink wrap and everything off ready for assembly. Which that's a great thing that, that I had to go to that effort because it's good quality stuff. And I mean, it's good quality stuff, but it's packaged well, and that's so important. Nothing more upsetting than waiting to receive something and then receiving it and it, you know, being damaged or something. And that's that's a good thing about this. I mean, even if the delivery drivers had been rough, it's still so high quality that I wouldn't have had any uh, concerns about it becoming damaged. Okay, so that this is going to answer our question. So on the ground, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 washers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, so those, that's what it is. Now, I did use the black washers on the outside. I just thought that looked cool. I don't think it matters, but, you know, I just wanted to mention that. This piece of components now is empty. So I'm using the other set. I just I wanted to take my time and make sure I was being thorough and it didn't potentially have to un you know redo reperform any steps. So let's just go ahead and take all these out here so we can just grab and, and go and uh, make this a streamlined process here. Let's see. I like this red color, man. I know you can get it in other colors too, but dude, this red's on fire, man. 
some fire and I got the bench, the Rep Fitness bench and I'll be doing an assembly, I may have already done the assembly video, subscribe to my channel and check out my videos, but I got it in red also. And then I'm going to do the power rack. I may do the power rack in red. I may do it in uh, another color. Okay, let's get this bottom one on so we can then tighten the other stuff. And again, the lip, the lip part goes out this way. Then the washer, and then the bolt, or the nut. I'm just going to kind of thumb tighten it until I set this other side on. There we go. Now, this is going to be easy now. Yeah, the washer did go on the underside, so I did that correctly. This looks nice. I've got this cut out to where these uh, bolts just fit right in there flush. It's a very professional design. Again, I'm just going to kind of hand tighten that. And then the other piece on this opposite side, the lip will face, see this lip right here? This will face the, towards the camera. Okay, now that, this will have everything lined up for us. Yeah, and that is correct. Everything is, everything's looking good. down there just kind of finger tighten it for now and do the same with the other side I think now what I'm going to do is tighten up these next brackets so I can finger tighten all the inside parts and then uh, and then finish them off. I'm just making sure I'm still recording. Good, my camera's not overheating yet. It's not as hot as it was yesterday.
Man, that feels good. I mean, this thing is definitely professional quality. Not something you would find in a sporting goods store. I mean, this is this is like you went into the gym and worked out with their equipment, except it looks nicer because it's freshly painted and doesn't have other people's sweat and body odor on it. Oh man, that looks good. Now we're going to do this side. This isn't going to take long at all now. Yeah, you want to make sure these are good and tight because you don't want a wobbly rack, man. You don't want your rack bouncing all around. nice okay and i'm going to go ahead and stay now these other ones the bottom one didn't have it but these other ones have this metal piece that it wants you to put on the outside so oh i don't know why but it wanted these pieces on the outside of the rack Maybe it's just for styling because it gives, because that rep logo piece sticks up. I guess that's just a piece for styling. I may have to, well, I don't know. What do y'all think? Should I take this off and put these on? If I discover I need them, I'm going to go back and put them on. But that's where they would go, and that was an oversight on my behalf. That's why I wish this had, had a step one, step two, step three. Because that piece would go there. I, I'm assuming it may be cosmetic. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. It doesn't affect the alignment of any of these pieces. I know that much because this goes right in. I'm assuming probably decorative component. 
But if you know when you're watching this video, comment below and tell me, is it just to keep a consistent look among the various sections or does it, does it serve some sort of functional purpose? And even with these just hand tight, hand tight and so far, they feel it's already got a rigid feel to it. Okay, now I can tighten this up, and actually I've got a screwdriver.
It's funny, some of these went, like the bottom ones, they went flat in, kind of flat with the surface of this red piece. <clears throat> and then the ones on the top, they're, uh, maybe I need to slide them just a little bit. Because it's like the top of the, uh, the bolt, the head kind of went, see, on the bottom ones, I can rub my hand across, it's pretty smooth. These kind of stick up. Maybe that's just, I don't know. What I want to do now is uh, gently lean this over so I can access the back of it. Because I think that's going to be the best way to do the rest. I think it'll be easiest if I can access top and bottom. Again, a, screw, a Phillips head screwdriver and a socket set probably makes this step easier too. And again, I just used a cardboard box that came with to protect the paint of the rack. See, that's flush. All of these are on the bottom. That's super tight now. Okay. That one's flush. This one's sticking up. We'll revisit it in a minute. There's a bee under there. Yikes.
Okay, that one's flush. Okay, that's good. So both sides of this one are flush. This one's not. Both of the bottom ones are. This top one, it's not. So, See, that one is. Wonder what's making that different. I'm going to flip this one around and see if it makes a difference here. There's a dead beat. Okay, it's, it's dead now. I'm just assuming maybe there's one side of these that's a little bit different. It's going to rotate it. Basically, just going to take this piece. That's what it is. Pay attention when you mount these. There's a little. There's a part that's that's kind of got a dip in it, a crater. That needs to face up because the other side doesn't have it. So important lesson learned during assembly. Yeah, now the bolt will fit flush in there. So take note of that because if you don't, your bolts can be sticking up. I mean, it's cosmetic, but then again, it could it could snag the. Uh, if you're using rubber coated dumbbells, it could potentially snag the rubber. So I'm gonna have to go through and flip a few of these. Again, I would have. This is a high quality rack. But I would have liked to have seen some more details in the uh, in the instructions. I think it's nice they put it all on one page. I'm sure there was some sort of pro uh, product manager that was trying to say, make it easy for the customer, dude. You know, that kind of thing. You know, we need it on one page. Do whatever you can do to get it on one page. And they did. And for the most part, the one page has been fine, but you can see this created a little bit of rework for me, so one page isn't always perfect when it comes to tutorial content. Okay, that's perfect. Now I gotta flip this one. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. See that? 
how it's flat and you flip the other side, it's got the little crater. See, and that crater lets the bolt fit flush. So that crater side needs to face up. Not a big deal, but still caused me to require a rework. Got this one I gotta redo.
Okay, now is the final quality check. Let's just kind of lift it over on that uh, cardboard so it doesn't scratch it. Looks good. And man, that feels solid. So now what we're going to do is flip it around. And I'm going to load it up with the dumbbells and show you what it looks like. Super sturdy. So there it is assembled. That's the assembly video. Again, subscribe to my channel and check out my playlist. Check out my home gym equipment video playlist. And you'll be able to see this with the, uh, with the Rev, Fit Rev Fitness dumbbells added to it. Thanks for your viewership. Be sure to subscribe. And when you do, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. And appreciate y'all's viewership. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.